there's nothing quite like the freedom of flying. And for the virtual pilot, Microsoft Flight Simulator offers perhaps the best current experience for this. After all, The Sims' digital copy, the digital twin of Earth, is something that other simulators don't even come close to. Now, the freedom of flying is all well and good, but the entire experience gets a serious boost with the use of head tracking. The recent arrival of the Game of the Year edition then introduced support for the Toby Eye Tracker. This allows not only for head tracking, but also eye tracking, a unique feature that actually brings plenty of benefits to the sim. Now, this video is sponsored by Toby, so do check out the links in the video description where you can find out everything you need to know. Now, I've spoken about the Toby Eye Tracker before. I'm a big fan of it and have used it extensively for both Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen. In fact, you'll see many videos of me using eye tracking technology going back to the very early years on this channel. I also know that many of you will be fully aware of what head tracking and eye tracking is about, but please bear with me for a few seconds while I bring those of you new to the tech up to speed. The Toby Eye Tracker then is a device that can be connected to your computer via a USB connection. The device itself attaches to your computer's monitor. You can see a bracket here and how that will actually link it to the monitor. Uh, by the way, the footage here of the unboxing was taken from way back when I received the device, so using it here for illustration purposes so you know what you actually get in the box. So once attached to your computer and connected by the uh, single USB cable, the device, the eye tracker, allows any supported game to track either your eye movement or your head movement, and in most often cases, both at the same time. As you can imagine, this brings a lot of benefits to gaming. Incidentally, the Toby Eye Tracker supports dozens of different games, and many of these have even have a native support. Anyway, in this video, I want to take a look at what the device brings to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I'm going to go through uh, some different aspects of the sim, and as everyone kind of plays the sim in different ways, I'd rather not take a deep dive into any one aspect of flying. I thought instead it would be better to highlight a few different areas, so let's get to that right now. So here you can see me flying the brand new Velocity that was added with Sim Update 7, that's the Game of the Year edition. The head look is being fully controlled by the motions of my head, so when I look left and slightly downwards there, that's me looking left and slightly downwards in the real world. The same applies for any other head movement direction. Now I should point out at this point that Microsoft Flight Simulator only supports uh, three degrees of freedom at the moment with the uh, Toby Eye Tracker. That means there's no uh, six degrees of freedom support just yet, so I can't lean forward or backwards or to the sides and have that tracked, but hopefully that's something that will arrive in the future. As you can see though, even with just the uh, three degrees of freedom, there is a significant increase in the sense of spatial awareness when flying around. Now, often in these videos I get asked, does uh, the Toby Eye Tracker support ultra widescreen monitors? The answer to that is yes, because here I am flying on an ultra widescreen monitor. Although it really should be pointed out that the Toby Eye Tracker has a max recommended screen size of 27 inches. However, the ultra widescreen monitor here is uh, 34 inches, and I have actually used it on my TV, which is 55 inches. But the limitations here are in what the uh, edges of the screen, the eye tracking, won't actually reach that far. So, uh, yeah, you may get away with using larger monitors. I have as well, I've had no problems there, but just be aware that 27 is the max recommended. Now, one thing you will have noticed just a moment ago, I was in the external camera and the head tracking was supported there as well. So whether using the cockpit cam, the external cam, or even the showcase cam, the head tracking and the eye tracking is fully supported in all those modes. So yeah, this opens up a lot of possibilities. Case in point is the recent introduction of the FA-18 Super Hornet in the Game of the Year edition for Fly Simulator. Fantastic plane, yes, not as highly detailed as the one in the DCS world, but this is free of course, and for what it's worth, for the value of free, it is absolutely fantastic. So here, I'm flying under stormy conditions, and I really wanted to weave in and out of some clouds, and this would really highlight, I felt, just how effective the uh, Toby Eye Tracker can be in the head tracking for spatial awareness. The funny thing is that clouds within a Microsoft Flight Simulator are one of those things that seem to be uh, somewhat divisive. Some people feel they're not really as good as they could be, some people feel they're a little bit blotchy, a little bit blurry, perhaps a little bit like uh, cotton candy or not realistic. For me, I think they are absolutely fantastic. They're some of the best clouds, if not the best clouds, 
in any sim or any game. I mean, tell me another game where you can actually do this. DCS World is one example, of course, but yeah, are there many others? I really don't think so. As I mentioned earlier in the video, a lot of people fly Microsoft Flight Simulator in many different ways. There's the people, the casual flyers, who just apply it for fun, and then there's those serious flight simmers. For this section of the video, you can see it's very much about the fun side of things. Flying in the external cam or the internal cam, this might not be what everyone would class as serious flying, but I tell you, it sure is a lot of fun. But for those moments, like me, when you're into some serious flying, either general aviation or airliners, then there's some clips right here to really show what the Tobii Eye Tracker is like when it comes to that as well. So here we are, back on the ground in a bit of a somewhat slower plane than the FA-18. On screen, you can see what Toby class as the ghost. This shows you, uh, viewers, what I'm actually looking at on the screen. This then is an overlay that can be enabled or disabled through the uh, Toby software, Toby Experience. There's also a feature that allows you to enable the ghost uh, eye gaze eye tracking for uh, streaming. So if you stream on Twitch or YouTube or anywhere else, your viewers can see what you're looking at. And for some cases, this might be very beneficial indeed. Now, moving the camera here is not happening with any turn of my head. I'm purely doing that with the eyes. Just gazing at certain things on the screen, the camera in-game will track what you're looking at and move the camera fairly gently accordingly. The Toby Eye Tracker then really is about a combination of both eye tracking as well as head tracking. I briefly touched on the speed of the in-game head look there, so there's a ratio here, the, the amount you turn your head in the real world, what ratio does that turn the camera in the sim? Traditionally, you'll have a setting for this that allows you to increase the ratio or decrease the ratio so you can get the exact frequency of motion that you want. Unfortunately, right now, there's no options for Microsoft Flight Simulator to enable us to do this, so basically, you're stuck with whatever the default setting is. The good side of that is that the default setting, for me at least, seems pretty accurate. It's about where I'd set it anyway. But some people may find this a little bit too fast, other people may find it a little bit too slow. Changes and customizations for these settings then are something that will be required for Sobo to add in as an additional menu at some point in the future. Keep in mind though that there's no date on if or when this will actually happen. Toby of course are keen for it to happen, but just be aware it's not there just yet. We've seen environmental awareness then inside the new Velocity. We've seen it in the clouds flying with the FA-18. We just took a look at how it all feels and looks within a general aviation craft. And this, of course, is how it feels in an airliner. So instruments, of course, are important in all airplanes, but there's nothing quite so important as instrumentation when you're inside an airliner. So having the head awareness here, the head tracking and the eye gaze really does improve things. If you're wondering how you enable and disable the eye tracker, that is done through the uh, camera interface here. Yes, there's a track IR option here. That seems to be the catch-all term or the catch-all uh, setting for enabling and disabling head tracking globally. Hopefully at some point in the future, Sobo can change the name of that particular option so that it's more reflective of what it's actually doing. Anyway, here's another example of using the head tracking outside the, uh, outside the plane's cockpit. So there we have it then, using the Toby Eye Tracker in a variety of different situations. And one more situation, of course, the brand new Reno races. Here I'm going for a qualifier time. So some thoughts and overview on the uh, Toby Eye Tracker. As I've said before, I find it a great piece of equipment. I've used it frequently, especially in Elite Dangerous. If you go back to many of my earlier videos, you will see me using it extensively right there. And now that it's supported in a Microsoft Flight Simulator, you'll be seeing me using it in future videos as well. So overall, the system works very well. The tracking is responsive as always. That's both for the eye tracking and for the head tracking. I'm disappointed that there's no six degrees of freedom implemented just yet. And of course, it's also a little bit disappointing that there's no way to customize the settings for the Toby eye tracker right inside the sim. But all of these are things that should hopefully come at some point in the future. It makes the Toby Eye Tracker well worth considering, all the more so if you actually use it for other games as well. So if you're a fan of space games or other flight sims, DCS World for example, 
or even a general game in Assassin's Creed and all the rest of those, the recent Far Cry title, then the Toby Eye Tracker is well worth taking a look at. And do take a look at the link in the video description where you can also find details on Toby's Black Friday offer. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.